Hi, this is Keith Williams. Welcome to Five Art World. We're interested in helping you get the most music from the least gear. I'm always fascinated when a guitarist builds a career on one style of guitar. Eric Johnson has used Stratocaster since the beginning, and after spending a couple of decades researching what he liked best in vintage strats, along with modifications he's done to suit his own taste, he teamed up with the Fender Custom Shop to design his signature EJ Stratocaster. Up next. Fender Artist Series guitars seem to come and go, but the EJ Strat and its two newer variants have been in continual production since 2005. A guitar that many people think rival the Fender Custom Shop guitars at about half the price. Johnson worked with Michael Braun from the Custom Shop using a favorite Strat on 1957 as the model. In particular, replicating the neck shape with its soft V in the lower frets and gradually becoming a more full C shape where it meets the body. The headstock angle has increased slightly, along with using height-staggered vintage-style tuners so the string trees could be eliminated. This greatly enhances tuning stability, one of Johnson's main criteria for a guitar, that it stays in tune. 21 medium jumbo frets are used to get above the thin coat of tinted cellulose lacquer on the fretboard. This finish feels great on the neck, without the stickiness of many modern finishes. The fingerboard radius is the largest deviation from vintage spec, at 12 inches something that Johnson has done to his vintage guitars in the past. This is the same radius that a Les Paul or a 335 has. It allows you to set up the action lower, while at the same time allowing for cleaner bends up high on the neck. I've been told that the earliest of the production Maple EJs had a flame maple neck, only later moving to a plainer quarter sawn neck. The flame is clearly visible in the black prototype that they built for Johnson, along with an atypical pearl dots, but I've also seen flamey necks on later models as well. Very first um, signature uh, Fender Strat that they made for me. It um, it was the prototype, and that's the one that they sent me. And I went, oh, okay, let's go ahead and make these. It's the one that made me decide to do it because they did a real nice job making this one, and, and all the aspects we worked on seemed to work out. So this is like the, I guess, the prototype one of all the ones they made. Johnson's often said that he's trying to get back to the original intentions of Leo Fender before things got muddied up by later company owner CBS that he wanted to create a guitar that would be accessible to more players than a costly vintage Fender would be. So many of the specs on this guitar are trying to capture the magic of the Fender guitars from the 50s, when Leo was still in charge. To that end, the body is a two-piece alder and is spec to be lightweight. Mine weighs just 7 pounds, 3.8 ounces. The contours on the body mimic those of Johnson's 57 as well, being deeper and smoother than those on later Stratocasters. The body is finished in traditional, and fragile, nitrocellulose lacquer. The tremolo block is unpainted where it bolts to the bridge, and the strings seat less deep in the block. Two deep hills that again mimic the 57, which brings it to the heart of any electric guitar, the pickups. EJ is well known for his dark and singing lead tone, but he should equally be thought of in association with playing chords with a clean chorus tone. He plucks the strings with an upward motion, mimicking the way lap and pedal steel players play. In this way, he gets a sound that's more like a piano, and it lends itself to the complex chord voicings he uses letting all their notes ring together. So the pickups are a little hotter than vintage, and this sweetens up the high end a bit, but they're also copies of the 57 in the neck and middle in particular, giving him the clarity he needs. The bridge is a little hotter yet, and the now classic wiring change that Johnson himself popularized of having the bottom tone control wired to the bridge pickup adds the ability to sculpt that tone. He sets his middle pickup low in the pick guard, because that's right where he tends to pick. So the combination of middle and bridge can get a very fat sound indeed. Back at the time of the guitar's release, Neville Martin from Guitarist Magazine wrote, quote, as both in-between positions on the five-way are noise-canceling, this is as close to a genuine humbucking tone as you'll find on a Strat, end quote. So you can play all the chiming rhythm that you want on the neck and middle pickups, and then throw the switch down into mid and bridge, or bridge alone, for fat lead tones. Three years later, in 2008, Fender brought out a Rosewood model of the guitar. Immediately, you notice the use of binding on the neck a feature that lasted just a few months in the Fender catalog in the early 1960s. The neck is modeled after Johnson's favorite rosewood board Strat from 63, with a little less pronounced V-shape than the maple version. The pickups were tweaked to suit the sound of the rosewood board as well. Besides these obvious changes, all the other specs from the earlier guitar are carried over onto the rosewood model. And 10 years on, in 2018, 
Fender's brought out the new Thin Line version. This guitar speaks to Johnson's longtime love affair with Gibson ES-335s. He wanted a Strat that has some of the semi-hollow characteristics he loves in those guitars. It's Fender's first contoured semi-hollow guitar, and Johnson says he's in love with the way the guitar breathes. My most used and favorite instrument is the Strat. I've used it all my career, and um, I've always enjoyed semi-hollow body guitars. To have uh, my Fender guitar incorporate that to me was like kind of melding two of my favorite things about a guitar. What if we could pull a couple of things together and maybe get, you know, a wider aperture of tonal performance from an instrument that would kind of still give you that punch and that mid-range that a solid body does, but leave enough of that fluxing of energy where it inhales and exhales. I had a chance to see him play on his current tour, and he played the thin line for the entire first set, only switching to his 57 for the full performance of his seminal album Avia Musicom in the second set effectively going from the most recent EJ Strat to the guitar that inspired the EJ signatures that came along later, all in one evening. And it was magical. Thanks for watching my video on the Eric Johnson Signature Strat. If you liked the video, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that too. Until next time, thanks for being part of the 5 Watt World. <laughs>